This story has been recorded at an Addictive Eaters Anonymous meeting in New Zealand. You can email us at contact at aeanz.org. And it's the first Friday of the month, so I would like to welcome <coughs> Lynette. My name's Lynette and I'm addicted to food. And um, I could be set down a little um, dressed up tonight. <laughs> Normally on this night I, uh, you know, am thinking, oh, who's the speaker going to be? And I look around and see who's, you know, got something just a little dressed up or a little lipstick or something like that. And uh, uh, yeah, I thought I'd just go that little bit uh, <laughs> over the top. And um, but actually, most days these days I get a little bit dressed up, and uh, I. Uh, I used to be like that too, you know, when I was young, and uh, I, I really, I love fabric, and uh, I was remembering that it was one of the first things I ever stole as a little kid, was fabric, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, and anyway, I found this over a year ago, and it's been in my wardrobe, and I have, um, until recently, had, haven't um, worn it, and I thought tonight. I would, and uh, I've been reading um, this little invitation, and it's um, it talks about um, you know our unique um, our uniqueness being our our gift from God, and um, you know that we have the freedom to develop that or not in our life, and um, and. Yeah, it it was sort of saying that you know if we don't if we don't then it's a shame because um, uh, everybody misses out uh, um, because you know I'm made very Lynette-ish. <laughs> you know I wasn't made Robinish <laughs> <laughs> I was made you know I was made me and um, and I really liked. Kind of reading that, and um, I think you know that I lived most of my life not being comfortable with who I was, and um, you know, trying to be something I wasn't, or um, just not being okay um, who I was, and. Um, it's about now that I'm thinking, earlier in the week, I talked to my sponsor and um, said, what am I going to talk about? And she said, you will uh, um, talk about what it was like, what happened and what it's like now, and the words will come. And I think, uh, I thought that was a great idea till about two hours ago. <laughs> <laughs> and at that point I was getting dressed and putting with you on. So, um, yeah, I am a little bit nervous about, um, you know, in the last two hours I have thought about, a lot, you know, a lot of things, but, um, uh, you know, as far as, you know, the order of them, I, um, I know that, you know, a lot of things have changed in my life, like a big change, and um, how I see things you know, is is so different to even how I experience them, you know, being me and, you know, my whole life. Like, um, you know, if I thought, oh, let's start at the beginning. Well, my normal story is, uh, you know, talking about how uh, I grew up and that, um, you know, that my love, mother loved my brother more than she loved me and I knew it very, very young and um, and really that was a theme that went on for decades that, you know, that I thought I was the way I was because I hadn't been given enough, um, enough of love growing up and, um, and now Honestly, I I just know that my mother in particular loved all of us kids 
the same. And I believe, you know, that I have that quality with my own children and I know that it came from her. And I think now more about what it must have been like for her having, you know, her own set of experiences and her parenting and her situation, but having me as a child who from very early on she would have known that she was not enough for me and you know whatever she was doing wasn't enough and I wanted more and um, and I was probably pretty demanding you know I know if I'm around children that are demanding um, it's tiring and I think now you know that must have been what it was like for her and I um, from a pretty young age went outside of the family to um, you know get what I needed and I imagine that probably wasn't easy for her as you know as a mother either and um, I um, You know, right, right through from pretty young age was very much outside of the family. I and I, I found you know a lot of very good people, and I was um, you know a kid that wanted attention, wanted appreciation from other people, and I was very capable, and I was a pretty cheery kind of a kid and there were people that you know liked to have me around and um, uh, but there was also you know people who um, weren't responsible with that and I was outside the family and I was vulnerable to uh, you know both men and women who who weren't responsible with that and you know, it made it made some things difficult for me growing up, and um, alongside of that, pretty early on, the food was right there, and I um, I I always wanted to eat, and I had very little ability to. Um, to stay away from the food, to um, and so yeah, I mean it talks in the big book about um, you know the craving developing, and I just think it must have happened pretty young because um, you know just my memories were always there of of really wanting the food, and um, and so you know from. You know, preteen, I was oh, I was overweight, and um, and yeah, during my teens, it just it just got uh, came full on really, and um, by my mid teens, I was going to Weight Watchers, and um, and it just kind of you know that it. it it didn't work for me in the way of, you know, went there, heard a solution and the problem went away. It just, it was just pretty constantly there and um, I was a pretty sensitive kid to um, you know, in friendships, I had I had good friends, and uh, but when things went wrong, I yeah I took things pretty personally. I was, of course, oversensitive, and um, you know, and, and when things didn't go well, it hurt, and um, I carried that pretty much on my own, and didn't really talk with other people about that, like, you know, even at primary school, I had some very tough days, 
or well, that I found, um, you know, as far as working friendships or things going wrong with friendships, and I never talked at home about that. I never, um, yeah, I just pretty much, you know, tried to deal with that myself, and um, uh, yeah, just carried on through through school. I also had a pretty cheery side, as I said, and um, enjoyed some things very much as well. And um, but by my late uh, years at high school, I was um, uh, vomiting as a way to control the food, and uh, also never spoke with anybody about that. One another girl did tell me that she did that and I could not believe she was telling me. And um, so I was pretty on my own with that and that frightened me. I wasn't very good at it. It made uh, you know made my nose bleed and um, it, it was scary and um, I didn't like it, but I sure as hell um, couldn't control the food, and uh, I, yeah, would have, you know, I, I was very capable, I was babysitting, I was doing a lot of babysitting, and I had money, and I would be down the street, and I would be buying food, and, um, I would forget about that during the week and then I'd go to Weight Watchers and I'd be getting in the line and it would be getting closer and closer and um, to me getting on the scales and I'd be remembering all these things that I'd eaten and done during the week and um, I think I, I didn't last that long at Weight Watchers but um, uh, it was just, yeah, pretty powerfully moved on with the food and um, and feeling different and not belonging and I I went boarding with a friend and I yeah went to teachers college and I sort of had a bit of a social group there where I didn't especially feel like I belonged either. I had one very good friend and that, that, you know, but until I sort of got in that, I, I didn't belong there and then I'd go home in the weekends and I'd be, um, you know, there'd sort of be a group there but I didn't feel like I belonged there either and, um, uh, yeah, I, I I don't think it was very normal and um, it was a, a little life that um, became pretty unmanageable. Um, I, met a, I met a boy um, and lots of things about that weren't right either and, um, and I knew it at the time but I didn't know how to not do, not carry on down that, and I, I thought that'll be all right. I'll, I'll help him, and I'll, um, you know, life will be so good. He won't want to um, do the things that he did that were against what I even believed, you know. And um, but it just all rolled on, and I was, I was in this life that um, I was desperately trying to you know, make good and, um, but it got pretty out of control. He, um, was an addict and I, um, didn't know that I was too and, um, so, yeah, I held fort there and, um, but it, it, I couldn't fix that situation and um, I was very ashamed of 
what what was going on there and um, uh, but nobody really knew because I didn't talk to anybody about it. I, I worked and I it was only really when I left that relationship, which was very, very hard for me to do, um, it was only after that that I really told people what was going on and they had no idea and they were people that I felt close to and um, who felt close to me and um, it was, you know, I was sort of remembering that time today as well because, um, you know, through my teens I was a great sewer and I, um, I loved to sew and I, even from a, you know, there's a photo of me, you know, around 14 and it was a family photo and there was me and I had trousers that I made and a blouse that I made and I had a sister and a dress that I made for her and my other sister had a skirt and a blouse and I, I loved doing that and, um, but you know, by the time I was in my early 20s, you know, I was so big that, um, there was no joy in in clothes or or making making stuff. It was it was horrible. Coupled with you know the self loathing that I had because I couldn't fix things. Um, you know it was a real low point uh, in my life and. Uh, uh, you know, I wanted things to be better and, you know, we had two children who, who lived with us, who had come to live with us and uh, it was very difficult for me to leave that situation and uh, but I eventually did and those two children came with me and for the next, I think, five or... I mean, it was five or more years they lived um, with me, and you know, we made uh, you know a pretty a good life. And um, uh, but still, you know, the food was was right there, and um, I still had no ability to control it, and. Things were still unmanageable in my life. You know, I used to be scared that that I was going to get sick with the stress inside me, and um, I used to, you know, go and have massages, and um, I used to go and book into the flotation tank for the just to get peace, you know, and um, uh, yeah, that that sort of stuff, you know, just was unmanageable, and um, every few years I would think, oh, I've got to go back to Weight Watchers. Um, I, in amongst that, I'd gone to counselling, uh, two two kind of bouts of um, counselling, um, trying to fix my situation, and um, yeah, as I as I got older, um, I was trying more of that, and I started personal growth courses and um, got involved there and um, it was I went to those for years, like nearly a decade I think and um, you know I used to say that it didn't work but you know as things have gotten on for me in this program I can really feel you know also what it says in the book, book in the promises about that we don't regret our past and uh, and I don't regret my time there either because I think it was part it was part of what got me to the point that you know that I came here and 
part of that was um, was you know discipline, like really uh, you know giving my word to something, and absolutely um, being giving it my everything and being very respectful to um, to other people and um, I never talked about my eating there, I never talked about the food. They did talk about something I remember once about armouring and I think they were talking about the extra 50 kilos or so that I was carrying. <laughs> <laughs> but I never talked about that and um, and I did a lot of crying there I nearly couldn't open my mouth without crying and um, that had passed by the time I got here so I didn't do it when I came here but um, uh, There's lots, there's lots that I don't know uh, about adding in or, or not, but um, I do think that, you know, I wasn't living the life that I was made to live because my life was so exhausting um, and I was so unhappy being me that, you know, things like, you know, I was, I was a very motherly person, but I had myself absolutely convinced that I was not having children. That's what I said from my late teens, that I was not having children. And, um, uh, you know, various people said to me, I hope you make a mistake. And um, I was very careful. Um, and at 36, I did make a mistake. But as somebody else said to me, is, you know, when things are too well planned, um, God steps in. And, um, and I did get pregnant. And um, I only knew about it for five days because then I had a miscarriage. And... Um, I think it was just a little process that um, managed to somehow, uh, you know, change things in me. And after that, I did think, oh, maybe I need to, you know, choose to have a baby. And um, I thought, well, I'm going to lie down and see if that goes away, because <laughs> I thought, if that's hormones, and you know, I thought, right, I'll wait a year. And it was something that Kevin and I did talk about, but it was, you know, me determining it, really. And, um, and after a year, we did both still want to have a baby, and we did, and... Um, and I wanted to be a perfect mother. And, um, and part of that was that I felt I could not be a perfect mother by having another baby after, after that. And uh, Kevin always wanted to have more um, children and I just said no way that I wasn't. And um, anyway, um, Kevin does describe those early years uh, <coughs> as pretty tough for, uh, you know, in our marriage and or relationship. And, and, um, and it was the toughest aspect of my life as well, uh, that close relationship. And um, anyway, a while a while down the track, um, and the food getting a lot, uh, you know, a lot worse. Um, 
or just just more of the same difficulty. I I could never control the food. I I just I always had to eat eat, and the only thing that I could try and do was try and um, limit the damage of what I did eat, and that involved at times things like uh, you know sacks of carrots and big bags of apples and you know and, and just trying to uh, eat rice crackers instead of um, potato chips and um, uh, you know it, it, it was never easy and, um, and in the end um, I did I did wake up once and I thought I don't want to be this person anymore and I knew that something had to change that was different than right I'm gonna buy a house near Q2 so that I can at any time can get out of the house and go and try and swim to control the weight you know it was different I just did not want to be that person anymore and um, back to counselling that time I um, absolutely blackmailed Kevin into coming with me and um, it was the last thing he wanted to do but he did come and uh, you know even the counsellor there you know pointed the finger at him and basically said that you know if I was happier I wouldn't be eating like I was and um, we got home and he just said you know, you are not pinning this on me. He knew that I knew that, you know, that I'd had this along, uh, you know, long before him. And um, I just tried to, you know, carry on with the things that they said, which involved going to the gym and exercising and um, writing in my journal and uh, all of those things. But... Um, I lost some weight and it was it was coming back a hundred miles an hour and I had no way of um, stopping it and um, and that is where I you know had in the back of my mind that um, there was a place for absolutely hopeless people and um, and I rang very angry one day and. Um, and I thought, well, there'll be some kind of hoopla. I, well, I know I won't agree or believe in, you know, that there'll be an answer there, but um, there might be something that just holds back a few kilos. And um, and I made that call, and um, yeah, it was so very, very different than anything I could have imagined because I came to this place where there was a whole room full of people who I listened to and I knew that they were like me, that they had been as bad. They were not people who had worried about a few kilos and um, were making a big deal out of it because I knew people like that and I couldn't stand them, and uh, they were people who talked about the obsession, that constant obsession with food, and uh, and I knew that that's what I had, and they were talking about that, and that they were free of it, and um, I knew that I'd found, I had found something very, very, very good and um, and so I stayed here and I listened, I listened for a few weeks and I knew that I had, a, had to ask for help and that didn't really suit me because, um, you know, I had always wanted to be very independent and self-sufficient and, um, 
and I was scared of asking somebody to help me. I, I thought that they would say no, and even if they said no, the worst thing about that would be how I felt about somebody. Um, you know, like that would I would just feel yeah so shameful about that. Like I don't know if I would have been able to come back. Um, uh, you know, just thinking about now, you know, um, and how today, you know, I want to have more Lynette-ness, you know, but there's no guarantee that people are going to like Lynette-ness, you know, and today I can cope with that, you know, I, um, you know, it doesn't crush me that, uh, you know, if, like, I just know that that's a fact of life, nobody likes, um, it has the experience of everybody liking their uniqueness, their way um, of being, um, but, you know, today I, I go along to my son's, uh, one of my son's sports, and um, uh, I walked in the other day, and I do what I do when I go there, and um, uh, I have my own little relationship with the coach, and um, I've met one particular mother who I have a connection with, and... Um, I walked in there the other day and there was a whole group of other parents sitting. Some of them were talking with each other, some of them were on their phones, some of them were, um, you know, uh, it was the regular thing that they did. And I, I thought, well, that's never, you know, you know that's, I'm, that's not me. I'm not, I don't go along there uh, for the purpose of that some other people are finding there but you know today I don't uh, think oh look at them or you know I don't make them wrong for being different to me and um, I don't make them bad because I'm uncomfortable because I'm Different. I get on and do what I do in that setting. I'm all right, and they're all right. And uh, it didn't used to be like that. But um, anyway, back to yeah, coming here, asking somebody to help me, and um, thankfully, um, just being willing to have no argument about that. I knew that I did not know how to get myself well. And um, for some reason, I did just come and, uh, well, I don't know. It's been able to happen that my life has changed and uh, I have a freedom from that obsession that I had no control over to today just having so much freedom from the food eating, I just don't have it, I just have a totally different experience of that. Um, and I know that it's not me, it's not because I'm behaving very, very well. I believe you know, I believe that I was born with this disease. It was there very, very early on, but I also believe that um, 
I was born to get better. I believe, you know, I just I believe that you know that God wants me to get well, and for that to happen, that obsession has had to be removed, you know, and that is gone because I can't battle that. I can't spend my life struggling with that. It's just it's not there today, and I have some practices that are able to happen in my life and now I, I don't have to worry about that. And, you know, I have meetings to come to where I hear so much goodness, so much wellness, so much helpfulness that I can use in my life. I have a sponsor who is willing to, you know, hear from me regularly and who hears me and is honest with me, who hears me and says what she knows to be helpful. <laughs> well I guess has been helpful in her experience and she is willing to say to me, you know, that sounds like that sounds like resentment or that sounds like you've got an amends to make and or is willing to, you know, help me, I guess, you know, have the steps as a part of my life that, so that, you know, I can, you know, get on, um, or they have the best chance of living a very, very good life, and, um, yeah. It seems to be working, <laughs> and um, I I have a lot, yeah, a lot of aspects that just are not a problem today. Or if they are, I I have a way out of them. You know, I. Because I just come and come and come and hear the same message over and over again. You know, I, honestly, I think, am I a slow learner or what? But it seems to be what it takes to get through, to get into me, to, you know, when just life happens with me. Other things spring to mind, other solutions or other ways of acting or being or thinking come because I hear them from people here and um, it just seems to be that that same repetitive stuff has been what has made a difference uh, you know, here and... Um, Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's the place for me, and um, I guess that that's just like a good place to leave it, and um, yeah, carry on listening to, to others' wellness. Thanks. Thanks.